Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we will be working our way through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. I really like thinking about isomers in terms of this diagram. You can start out at the very top and ask yourself the questions as you move down. To start off with, you're going to ask yourself, is this even an isomer in the first place? And the way you know that is if the molecules have the same molecular formula. If they have the same molecular formula, then they are isomers. Next, we ask ourselves if the compounds have the same connectivity. If they don't, then they're constitutional isomers. Think about it as being structural differences for constitutional isomers. They have the same exact components, but we created the structure in a different way. If you answer yes to this question, we know we're dealing with a stereoisomer. Stereoisomers have the same components, they have the same connectivity, but they're different in the way that they're arranged in space. And now we ask ourselves, can the compounds be interconverted by rotation about single bonds? If yes, we're dealing with conformational isomers. And notice that the only difference between these two compounds is that if I rotate this side into the clockwise direction, then they basically become the same exact compound. It's the way that they're oriented, the way that the bonds are rotated, that makes them different from each other. So we call these conformational isomers. If we answer no to the question, we know we're dealing with configurational isomers. And now we ask ourselves, is the isomerism at a double bond? If so, we're dealing with geometric isomers. And the reason geometric isomers are so different than conformational isomers is that geometric isomers cannot rotate about that bond because it's a double bond. It's very fixed. Whereas conformational isomers are about a single bond so they can rotate freely. If we answer no to isomerism at a double bond, we know we're dealing with optical isomers. And we need to ask ourselves now, are the compounds non-superimposable mirror images? If so, they're enantiomers. If they are non-superimposable non-mirror images, we're dealing with diastereomers. And something to make note of is that everything that falls under the white boxed labels is part of that category. For instance, everything below this label is an isomer. Everything below this label is a stereoisomer. Everything below here is a configurational isomer. Everything below here is an optical isomer. So these, these higher up categories are umbrella terms for everything that falls underneath it. Therefore, in regards to the question at hand, what are enantiomers? They would fall under the umbrella category of stereoisomers. For this reason, answer choice C is the correct answer. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you are really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.